Thank you for viewing the Be Ready Street Ministries YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe and may God bless you all in abundance. It is a digital currency that is not tangible, meaning you cannot touch it, but it's got a sequence to it. And it's being sold right now. At its peak in 2017, each coin was being sold for $20,000. One coin. When it first started, that coin was only worth about 50 bucks. So you see, there are people that are heavily, heavily vested into changing the world currencies. But the Bible says that how can you guys discern the weather? You see, we can discern the weather, we can watch ABC, Fox, and all these channels, and they'll tell us what weather it is. But the Bible says that we cannot discern the times. We literally live in incredibly evil times. If you guys cannot see that, I don't know what else to tell you. Just look it up. Nation birth, the Bible says, in order for Jesus to come back, there are certain criteria that have to be met. He said there will be wars and rumors of wars. That's already been active throughout time. There have been wars being fought. Then it says nation shall turn against nation. But you see, the Bible doesn't mean only countries turning on countries, which is also happening, but it means person versus person. That means black versus white, Latino versus Asian. Because you see, these people who are in these high places of wickedness, they want to bring division to us. They want us to, to feel enraged, and they want us to be mad at our neighbor. But you guys don't understand is that Jesus died for everybody. Jesus died for every single one of us. There is not any single one of us that he esteems over the other. The Bible says that he is a God of equity. But right now you have people trying to take justice into their own hands. They think that they can push God's hand by bringing justice to the street. And the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We cannot take law into our own hands. And we need law to govern us. We need law and order. Did you guys know that the laws of this world came from the Christian Bible? Did you know that the laws of this land came from the Christian Bible, which started from the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not cover your neighbor's possessions. Do these things sound familiar to you guys? Because if they do, the Bible says whether you believe in Jesus or not, they are actually written across the hearts of every man and woman. Yes, you don't need anybody to tell you what the difference between good and evil is. You already have the Ten Commandments which Moses held at that mountain inside of your heart. The Bible says that I wrote my commandments inside of your heart. And the, the significance of that rock splitting was now that that word was actually internal. And that, that means that God had taken a, a heart that was made out of stone and made it a heart of flesh. And when it comes down to this world right now, that is our problem. It is a sin problem. It is a heart problem. 
A lot of us think that we can go fix an issue over there when we haven't even turned a mirror on ourselves to see what it is that we ourselves are fighting against. We are here fighting for social justice, but our own lives are full of sin. How can you sit there and say that I'm going to fight for those who are oppressed and this and that when you yourself are oppressed? How do you think you can set somebody free if you are still captive? And this is what Jesus came here to do. Jesus came here to liberate your heart from the wiles of the devil. You see, this world will teach you. Follow your heart. Do what your heart says. It'll always lead you in the right direction. But that completely contradicts what the Bible says. Isn't it very weird? And I know people might call us Bible thumpers or weirdos or whatever because we worship a book that was written 2,000 years ago. Isn't it very ironic that the same book that people call old and ancient and outdated, this society literally mirrors it in the opposite direction. That means if the Bible says up, this world says down. If the Bible says left, this world says right. Can't you guys see that the wool is being pulled over your eyes? The Bible says that Satan blinds the minds of, of people on this earth. And that's what this world is right now. It's blinded. You have physical eyesight, but you don't have spiritual eyesight. And in this physical realm, there are things that are spiritual that exist. And these certain principles, such as you having the power of life and death in your tongue, that is a universal thing. But so many of us right now, we walk around cursing, we walk around swearing, we think that there's no implications for our souls, but our souls are going to be judged at the end of this. Jesus wants to bring peace to this nation. I know some people uh, were screaming, no justice, no peace, uh, justice for Floyd, but the Bible says that if you know Jesus, then you will know peace. The reason why we don't see peace in these streets, the reason why we don't see peace in the cities, is because people don't have Jesus at the helm of their heart. They're chasing the ways of this world, which will always lead you down the wrong path. Jesus wants to bring light to the darkness. Jesus came here to expose darkness. That is what we are here doing. It is not about white lives matter, all souls matter. It's, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus Christ. Jesus wants every nation to bow to him. But because some of us think that we haven't figured out that we have the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus can't work in those places. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives his ear to the humble, he gives grace to them. But man in his own pride, the same thing that the Bible talks about, you are of your father the devil. What happens is that pride creeps into the man of heart, uh, to, the, to the heart of man, I should say, excuse me. And then what happens is deceitfulness starts. And then lies start, and covetousness starts, and then murder starts. And that's where we are today in 2020, where we're arguing about subjects that were never talked about before, that were unprecedented, that we are now arguing about. God made us, human beings, to be vessels for Him. God made us in Him's image so we can glorify God in our bodies. God did not make us so we could put whatever we want to in our skin, on our skin, go here, go there. The Bible tells us to be holy as God is holy. A lot of us want blessings, but we don't want to put in the work to get blessed. A lot of us think that we can just walk in our own direction, and when we fall into a hard place, we can pull out that rabbit's foot named Jesus and call on to him when things are getting bad. But I'm telling you today, my friends, that we live in a very, very dangerous era. And the Bible says that there's going to come a time where God's wrath, his cup of wrath, yes, God has a character named wrath, that is going to be poured out upon this nation. And at that time, salvation will not be found. A lot of people think that we have until tomorrow, uh, five years from now, 15 years from now, because the doctor said that we're in good health to get saved. But the Bible says, if, if, if God was to require your soul today, on which side of eternity would you stand on? If you were to breathe your last breath right now, are you certain as to where you would go? Are you certain that there is no afterlife? Almost every culture in this world believes in one. Do you really think that you have it all figured out? I ask you not to scare you and put fear into your heart, but to ponder your path. The Bible says that if your hand causes you to sin, it is better for you to cut it off than to enter into hellfire with both hands. Sin is a very, very serious problem, my friends, and it has infected the minds and the hearts of so many people in this nation. 
There are actually people trying to get into power that think by banning Christianity that they are doing God's work. Fulfilling Bible prophecy where it literally says, they will arrest you for my name's sake. They will persecute you for my name's sake. I know it may not be happening now in plain eyesight, but it is already actually happening in legislatures. Yes, there are politicians that people, even Christians are voting for, that are literally oppressing them. But because people don't want to do their research on politics, and they'll say, oh, uh, you know, I just stay out of politics, but God was always in the business of politics. In the Old Testament, every prophet of God was right next to a king. The prophet Daniel was right next to a king. David was right next to a king. Um, the prophet Samuel was right next to a king. When Jesus died, he went right after the kingdoms of the world to rebuke them for their evil and tell them to repent. And that's what we're here telling you today, folks, that if you want peace in this nation, if we want peace in this land, if we truly want to see unity between white, black, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, it doesn't matter. We all need Jesus just the same. Jesus didn't come here for one nationality. Jesus didn't come here for one nation. He came for all of us. And if you would believe in him today and confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart what you said, you can be saved. I know that sometimes our situations can look very dire and it can look very dark, but Jesus can take you right from where you are today and he can save you. I was saved inside of a jail cell. I was saved at my lowest point. I could literally hear demonic spirits out loud. The same way I can hear myself speak right now, I could hear demonic spirits speaking to me. But it was when I confessed Jesus, watch yourself bro. It was when I confessed the name Jesus, no problem. It was when I confessed the name Jesus in that jail cell that something within me started to change. And it was when that change occurred, when I came out from prison, when I came out from jail, I was inside of a federal holding facility. Um, I got into a fight with the police officers. I got maced, I got tased, I got pepper sprayed, I got nightstick. I'm a kid that grew up in the projects. I'm a statistic. I could have been a statistic, but Jesus changed all of that. What's up, brother? What's that? Okay, all right. So um, when I came home from prison, I had a lot of work to do. I had a lot of sin that was in my life, but it was from that moment in time when I confessed Jesus from my heart, not from my intellect, not from being in a bad situation, but I sincerely, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, when I said Jesus, I said, please save me from the bottom of my heart. And I meant what I said with my heart. It was when I said those words, I was saved inside of that jail cell. I literally got set free while I was still a captive. The same way that Paul got knocked off of his horse when he was going to persecute Christians. I know a lot of us will look at Christians today and say, look at you, you guys are hypocrites. Look what you used to do five years ago. Look what you used to do 10 years ago. But the Bible is filled with men and women of God that had incredibly dark past. Matter of fact, I would go even so far as to say that the darkest of sin that people are in, Jesus can set you free from that bondage instantly. But sometimes healing, it takes time. Sometimes deliverance, it takes time. So some of us, we come to Christ for a while, and then what happens is the Word of God doesn't bear fruit inside of our hearts, and the devil steals us away to this world. You don't know how many times me and his brothers pray for people, and sometimes you can see fruit manifesting immediately, and for other people, it takes time. But I'm here to tell you today, my friends, that if God starts to work in you, he will finish it. His name is Jesus. He saves, he heals, he delivers. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change the way that he thinks of you. If you are hearing a voice that's condemning you, that is telling you that you are dumb, that you are this, that you are that, I'm here to tell you right now, my friend, you are listening to the uh, voice of the fallen ones. You have to understand what Jesus thinks of you. Jesus thinks of you as his son, his daughter. He thinks of you as his creation. He holds you in a very, very high degree of affection. But is the devil the one that's in this world roaming around to see whom, whom he may devour? He is the father of lies. And he's got so many people twisted up mentally to where they literally can't think straight. They think that what they do every day, their lifestyle is, is being driven by them. But my friends, everybody's being driven by something. Who are you a servant to today? Are you a servant to God or are you a servant to sin? Because if you are living in sin, you are serving the enemy. But a lot of us are ignorant of Satan's devices because we're not saved. 
That's why we need Jesus. We need Jesus for discernment. We need Jesus for eyesight. We need the Bible for guidance to this world. The, the Bible is like a Ram McNally. For those of you who are probably like 25 plus, I know it sounds old. I don't know if you remember what a Ram McNally was. It was a map. And that map is like a compass in this dark world. And that is the Bible, my friends. If you are wondering what era we're in right now, if you're wondering how this is all going to end, I know some of us buy farmer's almanacs, but I can tell you the most complete almanac of all time is the Bible. The King James Bible. The Bible. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the truth. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. Get the hands. The Bible. If you're wondering what's going on right now, the Bible is literally like an all-time calendar. It is going to tell you how this world ends, how it started, where we are currently. It's going to tell you the timelines. It's going to tell you the issues that are going to come up between people. This is the only book in the history of mankind that's been written that's been accurate every single time in terms of prophecy, either that has passed or is coming to pass. Every place that they mention in the Bible has been proven geographically. Why do you think it is at your university they put BC and AD before Christ and in an Anno Domini, which is after death, after Christ's death? You see, our own universities cannot deny this truth. These educators might lie to us and teach us more about Egypt and witchcraft than they do Christianity, but my friends, Jesus Christ is the truth. And you know, some people might even say that, oh well, uh, you know, uh, Christianity, that was just there to, uh, to, to enslave people and this and that. But Christianity, from what I found out the other day, is actually was in Africa before it ever hit the Europeans. The Europeans got it last. It was already in African nations. So that throws that whole argument right out the window. Jesus is not just a white man's religion. Jesus is not also just a black man's religion, which some of these Hebrew Israelites here locally preach. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus died for all. Jesus died on that cross and he died for us all. He bore our sins so we would not have to pay the penalty that God had for us. Jesus died from the wrath of God so we wouldn't have to face that wrath. Do you guys understand what the Bible says. A true friend lays his life down for his friends. That is Jesus, he is a friend, he is a comforter. Seek him while he may be found. His mercy renews every morning. Search God with all your heart. Search for God with all your heart. I promise you, you will find him. The way that you guys search for clothes, the way that you guys search for jobs and these accolades from these colleges, the way that you guys search for shoes and Macy's and Marshall's, search for God. If you were to seek God the way that you guys sought the things of this world, you would have found him by now. I know a lot of people say, where is your God? He doesn't exist, but many of us put other gods in front of him. The Bible says, you shall have no other gods before me, for I am a jealous God. That means if you chase the rap culture before you chase God, then that is your God, the rap culture. If you chase, if you, if you idolize your skin color before you follow God, then that means that your skin tone has become your God. This is the reason why we are where we are today. Because the sin of idolatry is running rampant in a lot of people. And a lot of people might tell me, oh well, I don't have a statue of Mary at home. I don't have this and that. But the Bible says that if anything takes place in your heart or mind above Jesus, then that is already an idol that's been erected. If you want peace in this world, if you want peace in this land, the Bible says if you know Jesus, then you will know peace. Stop screaming, no justice, no peace, and scream out the name of Jesus and ask him to save you. And then we will see justice running through this land. We will see justice being rendered through this land. Jesus made all of us individuals. Of course, he is grieved by what is going on in this land. But the problem still comes down to sin. The problem still comes down to sin. We don't mind protesting for George Lloyd. I understand what happened to him, but what about protesting for the innocent man's death named Jesus? The one who died a, a, a sinless, who lived a sinless life, who died a horrible death for us. What about his injustice? What about Christians who call themselves Christians standing up for the name of Christ? What about Christians who will protest and march protesting for Jesus to be spread throughout their nation? How about that? That's a little hypocritical if you ask me. I see all these leaders walking around in these marches, but when you got these neighborhoods with crack dealers, 
prostitution and every kind of evil underneath the sun destroying their neighborhoods, all these pastors are mute. They don't say nothing. You'll never see them out here. You know why? Because it doesn't fit their agenda. They're there for money. We are here for souls. Jesus Christ came for your soul. We're not here with a collection basket asking you for money. We're here asking you to give your life to Jesus so you can know peace. That's what we are here for. I don't have a Bentley parked around the corner. My brothers and sisters drive regular cars. We're regular Joes just like you and I. But this world, this world is becoming darker. So we are out here shining the light of Jesus, telling you that there is a hope, that there is a way, that there is a truth, that there is a life. His name is Jesus. He is the doorway. He is the shepherd. He is the only gate by which you may enter into heaven. If you enter into heaven by any other name but by the name of Jesus, the Bible calls you a thief and a robber. You cannot enter into heaven through voodoo. You cannot enter into heaven through witchcraft. You cannot enter into heaven through third eye opening. You cannot enter into heaven through marijuana smoke, through Allah, through Buddha. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What prophet do you know that can raise people from the dead? What prophet do you know that can bring people back to life, that can forgive sin? Remember the Pharisees when they killed Jesus, they said, you commit blasphemy because who, uh, who can forgive sin but God? There's your key. A lot of Christians out there actually even deny that Jesus Christ is God. They'll say, no, he is the son of God. No, Jesus is God. Jesus has the power to forgive sin. Even the Pharisees said the only one who can forgive sin is God. Jesus Christ is Lord, my friends. He is merciful. I'm here to tell you about his love. Confess him, even in a secret place. If you're scared to come up to us, ask him in your secret place, in your prayers. He will fill you. He will give you dreams, visitations. He will send people your way. He will give you a new life. I used to be a drug dealer. I ran with some really bad guys. I ran pretty heavy in the streets. I know I look like your average Joe right now, but trust me, 10 years ago, I was not this person. But Jesus Christ, when he touched me inside of that federal holding facility, he changed my life. He took me from where I was at and he saved my soul. I could be dead, I could still be in jail. Matter of fact, I was on my way to physically go kill somebody when I got saved. When Jesus Christ took the hands of my wheel, I was physically losing control of myself. If anybody knows of Jesus' delivering power, it is me. I am no better than anybody here walking by I was in no less or more darkness than anybody here is walking by, but I'm here to tell you today that there is an antidote for that venom that's in this world coming from that snake. And his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ is that anti-venom. Jesus Christ is the cure that we are looking for. We are looking for justice. We need to look to Jesus. If we were to look to Jesus and start forgiving one another, start forgiving one another and start uniting then we would see real peace in this place. The same thing that Martin Luther King talked about, that I have a dream that one day, all men and women will walk hand, walk in the streets and hold hands, irregardless of color. That is the dream of Jesus. Every single nation to be a house of God. Jesus did not come here for white skin, for black skin, for Asian skin, for Spanish skin. He came here for all skin. And in Jesus' name, we are all kin. We're all brothers and sisters. I don't hate anybody. I love all of you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.